Okay, so I've got some of the steps up here. Um, you want to start by wedging your clay, so that means kneading it for a few minutes at the table to get any air bubbles out. It's a little bit more important to do this with rowing than hand building because with hand building, if you run into an air bubble, you can kind of manually fix it. Um, but with throwing, if you have an air bubble, then it's a big problem because you can't stop the wheel and manually fix it easily. In fact, you never want to touch your pot when it's stopped on the wheel because it will mess up the balance. Because you use centrifugal force to make it all perfectly centered. So you only want to touch it when it's moving. So after you've wedged your clay, you have a ball about that big and you want a dry wheel head doesn't have to be perfectly dry, but like at least a little dry so that when you throw it down, it's going to stick and seal because if you don't throw it down hard enough or if it's like really slippery or your clay is too wet, see how it's not too wet, um, then it's going to move and you're going to not be able to continue throwing that pot. You're going to have to start over. So it has to stay sealed to the wheel. Um, so if you mess up and you start over, don't use that same clay, get a new ball, which is gonna happen, it's okay. Um, so you're gonna throw it down firmly into the exact center <laughs> as close as you can get. Oh, and this is after I use the heel of my hand to get it all perfect, like a ball. All right, so it's on there firmly, then I'm gonna use my hand to make it like a little mountain. So it sticks really good and it also just helps with the centering. And this is all before I turn on the wheel. And before you throw, you want to have everything set up because you're going to get messy. So you don't want to go and have to grab a tool. So the tools that you need are a wooden tool, um, preferably with a flat end. You need a needle tool. You need a rib, possibly and you might need a sponge. Um, you also need a slip bucket with water on top so you can keep dipping your hands. So then you're gonna turn on your wheel so there's the main on switch and then you also have a speed pedal slash joystick. Yeah, um, not all wheels have both. Some just have like a little switch for high, medium, and low. These two wheels are actually really nice wheels. They're like probably between twelve and two thousand dollars. Um, they're nice Brent Amico wheels, um, so they're going to be nice to throw on. These splash guards are a little annoying because I can't figure out exactly what position they're supposed to be in, so they keep rubbing a little bit. But just adjust it as best you can. So then we're going to start in fast speed. So the first step, the first stage is centering, which is the hardest. Um, and you want to do that on full speed. Okay. And you don't have to keep your leg on this. It'll stay. And then just try to get the splash pan so it doesn't rub. All right. Now, for your analogy on the best way to center is picture you're pushing this mountain into a hole in the middle of the wheel head. So you're like using a lot of pressure and you're going to brace your elbows and you're going to push down and you're going to kind of have your thumbs crossed almost like, you know, Napoleon Dynamite, that one scene, but this way. And you're gonna be using the heel of your hand and also your whole hand like pushing down as well. So you'll see when I start that I'm gonna be like whomping, I call it whomping, like moving a lot. And your goal is to stop that whomping. So it should like be spinning so that it's not all crazy. That's our goal, that's the hard part. And I'm no expert, but I try. So we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna take some of the slip water and we're gonna put it on our lump. We're also gonna wet our hands.
and then I'm going pushing down hard. And whenever you feel it starts to get dry and start catching, you need more water. So the biggest thing people don't realize is how much force that you're using. You're using a lot of force. So, and you can see, see how it's wobbling? So it's not centered. So during this centering process, we're coning. See it has up and down arrows. So that means you should try to squeeze it up and down, up and down a couple times, and that'll help it get centered. So that's just the action that we can take while we're trying to center. So that means squeezing with this part of your hands and then pushing kind of with your thumb pads, like this part. And whenever you're releasing your hands, you're doing it gradually and gently. No sudden release.
Okay, so that happens sometimes, and it's mostly because the clay that I just used, I was afraid of this. It's, it's like smushed together from the whole day of throwing, so it's too wet. Like, I just grabbed some of the clay from the bag and I thought it might be too wet and it was. So It's from like other people throwing today. Um, this is kind of wet though. Yeah, it's too wet. Um, <laughs> is there another bag under there? So that happens when it's too wet then? Yeah, and just like irregular. Is there a scraper right there in the sink? Tavian, can you open another bag of stoneware really quick? It's the white clay. So this is a good lesson though. When you're done throwing, you're gonna cut it off with the wire like this by pushing down as hard as you can with your two thumbs and pulling it across the surface um, underneath. And you're gonna carefully carry your pot <laughs> to a bat like this. And then you're going to scrape the wheel head for the next person. We do have bats. Bats are those round platforms that you can actually screw onto the wheel head. There's two holes. And I'll, yeah, thanks. And I'll grab some screws from the studio. So that way you can just pick up the whole bat. You don't have to cut it. But for now, we can just cut it. All right, so what do I need to do with this clay? Wedge it a little. Down and then 
back up. Using the heels of my hands and guiding with my fingers. Using heavy, heavyish pressure and kind of thinking about that analogy that I'm pressing down into a hole in the bottom, an imaginary hole. Do this 
you can do that part with the next step. So we just slow it down a little bit more. And you can see that it's not perfectly centered. It's a little wompy. That's just my skill level, but hopefully it'll be centered enough that it will stay okay. At least enough to show you so that you can try. So the next step is pulling. So again, slow speed. This you want to do at about 3, 4 o'clock if this was a clock, so about here. Unless you're left-handed and then it's going to be on this side. And you're going to make a motion like this. So you're going to use pressure both on the inside and the outside. And you're, what you're doing is just grabbing a little clay from the bottom and pulling it up slowly. So you're trying to make your wall thinner at first and then after you've done it many times then you're trying to do your shape whatever shape you want to do so right now i'm just trying to get the wall thinner so i'm going to start down at the bottom and it's not going to look like much is happening at first because you want to go slow with it. You want to do this gradually. Will you take my camera and bring it over here so they can see me pull? I'm going to pull it out of this coat. Yeah. So the hole is getting a little bit bigger. Now look how it's not deep enough. Like if we, if I left it like that, it'd be like this deep. So I need to go a little deeper with my fingers before I open anymore. Now, if you want to check and make sure that your base is a good thickness, you can turn this off for a second and take a needle tool does anybody have a needle tool handy this thing yeah can you bring it to me hey ryan catch oh no <laughs> but it's not for the different color yeah do you think it'll do anything i'm gonna wipe it clean it clean it yeah clean, clean it. it okay mix it please real quick amateur Got an amateur in here. Can I have to pass you to the bathroom? Yeah, can you write it? Where are the passes? I don't know, on my desk. That's good. Okay, so you take a needle tool, make sure it's clean, not just because of the clay, but because you need to see. And you're going to just do a straight down, and you can see where the clay. You do it again where the level is, which is like right there. So mine's good now. So you can use that as a measuring tool and you turn it back on. What do you do with the hole in the bottom that you just pulled? It will fill. Like on its own? Mm-hmm. What if I just screw the fry That's fine. It's fine. Alright, so I'm continuing my pulls. It's really thick at the bottom, so I'm going to use a little